V1 neurons tune to multiple feature dimensions. We have seen that V1 neurons can be tuned to all kinds of features and feature conjunctions. They can be selected to orientation, color, spatial scale or spatial frequency, binocular disparity, eye of origin, whether it's left or right eyes, selected to motion directions or not selected to motion directions, and selected to temporal frequencies, and they can be tuned to both color and orientation, to both spatial and temporal frequencies, to both orientation and disparity, and also preferring a particular eye, left eye or right eye, or they can be not tuned to orientation but tuned to a difference between one spatial region versus another, center and surround. We also notice some regularities. For example, neurons tuned to color are often tuned to smaller spatial frequencies and often they are not tuned to orientation. Or um, neurons tuned to higher spatial frequencies tend to uh, prefer lower temporal frequencies and vice versa. And neurons tuned to large disparities, binocular disparities or large phase disparities tend to have larger resistive fields. And we have explained these regularities from the efficient coding perspectives. We can summarize these observations and ask whether there is a rule of thumb for understanding how feature tuning to one feature versus tuning to another feature are related to each other. We know that all visual inputs come in these original dimensions, space, time, C for color, cones, whether it's red or green or blue cones, or called LMS cones, for cones tuned to lights of wavelengths that's long, medium, or short. And also the dimension E for eye of origin, so left eye or right eye. Meanwhile, each of these input features comes from an input contrast or input difference in one or more of these original dimensions. For example, a, sp a spatial orientation, um, say a horizontal orientation, is really a vertical input contrast or an input difference between two locations displaced vertically but not horizontally from each other. Color is an input contrast between inputs to different cones. So a red color is a difference between input to the red cone and a green cone. So it's an input contrast or input difference or input change from one cone to another. Yeah. So and uh, spatial scale and frequency is again an input change in space and disparity is an input change in both space and eye of origin. Yeah, and uh, motion direction is a change in space and time of the inputs. Therefore, to be tuned to one of these particular input feature means to have a sensitivity to that particular input change in one or more of these input dimensions. So from our efficient coding scheme, we have seen that the sensitivity is determined by this gain control step to determine the gain for each input component. So if this gain is high enough, then there will be neurons to that particular feature or feature combination concerned. We have also seen that this gain is determined by signal to noise. Okay, so vertical axis is gain and horizontal axis is from strong to weaker signal to noise. So this gain follows this black curve, which shows that when the signal noise is high, the gain is lower in order not to waste output power. And then the gain rises as the signal becomes weaker. So it compensates by rising the gain until the signal is overwhelmed by noise, then the gain drops down in order to avoid sending just the noise through the channel. So this going up and down is the um, manifested, for instance, 
in here example when you have the frequency spatial frequency from low to high this is when the signal also goes from high to low okay and you can see that it rises the gain rises and falls and similarly for the chromatic channel from low to high it falls it falls quicker because the signal noise in the chromatic channel is weaker this means that when the signal power is too weak the gain or the sensitivity will drop to zero yeah so therefore uh, for neuron to be tuned to some features or feature combinations uh, you need to have sufficient signal power for those feature or feature combination now let's use this idea to understand the feature tunings we observe in the v1 neurons now because inputs are correlated in each of these input dimensions so every time you want to take an input change along any of them you are reducing the input power for example let's take the spatial dimension the signal at location x1 and signal at location x2 are correlated in natural things so therefore if you sum the two correlated signal together they have stronger power than if you take that difference yeah and so this is the same as in time signal in time is correlated so therefore if you integrate in time the signal becomes stronger but if you take the difference in time take you know, changes in inputs you get weaker signal and similarly for color if you integrate the cones red green blues to cone together you get luminance yeah you get gray and uh, bright and white and it's stronger in power compared to the color difference such as between red and green and so on and similarly if you integrate between the two eyes the signal is stronger because the input in the left and right eyes are correlated then if you take the difference take the signal in the left eye minus the signal in the right eye at the same spatial location then you reduce the signal power you can make this difference signal bigger if you take a, a spatial summation first imagine you have four spatial locations x1 x2 x3 and x4 such that x1 and x2 are next to each other and x3 and x4 next to each other so you can just add these together so have a spatial summation first and another summation then take that difference and this difference will be stronger than that difference yeah this is analogous to well actually actually the same as a low spatial frequency range where you take a, a spatial summation for local pixels together and then you take a difference between two uh, large regions and that's for low spatial frequency where here this is for high spatial frequency when x and when x1 and x2 are very close together similarly you can also boost the spatial difference signal by summing over in time so for example rather than take the D signal right away you first take the time so at x1 you sum over t1 and t2 so you integrate the signal in time for the location x1 and also do the same for the location x2 and then you take that difference that will make the signal stronger than just straight without integration in time and this is the reason why here you take low tempo frequencies this means to integrate signals in time before you take high spatial frequencies which means to take the difference between two spatially very nearby signals analogously you can do the following if you like to take the signal difference in time you can make this different signal stronger by first of all integrating space so this is time t equal to one you integrate in space x1 and x2 to make the signal stronger because of the signal correlation yeah and then also integrating space for t2 x1 x2 added together then you take that difference that's also helpful to boost the signal this is analog this is uh, analogous to here this is where you want to have higher tempo frequency that means you want to take the difference in time but you take lower spatial frequency that means you are integrating signal in space so therefore there's a trade-off here uh, just like here 
Here in high spatial frequency region, we are taking a most severe spatial contrast, meaning a contrast between two very nearby spatial locations. So the resulting signals are much weaker than that at the low spatial frequency region, where the contrast is taken between two far away spatial locations. Therefore, in order to have uh, enough signal power in these spatial contrasts, one not only needs to sum in time by having low temporal frequencies, but also sum in the cones, the colors, the sum of the red, green, blue cones together in order to make this uh, enough signal power. Therefore, these neurons are insensitive to any color difference between the cones. Yeah, and so if you want to take the difference between the cones, you have to move to a uh, lower spatial frequency region, so then you can be sensitive to color. So the cells receive fields are larger in order to sum sufficiently in space before taking any spatial contrast. Yeah, and uh, these cells tuned to both color and orientation have a higher spatial frequency reach, frequency than these cells. So therefore, in dimmer environment, when the signal input signal is um, not so strong, few such cells remain. Therefore, whenever one takes a contrast in any input dimensions, so for example, you can take an ocular contrast for a difference between inputs to different eyes, or a chromatic contrast for a difference between inputs to different cones or spatial temporal contrast between inputs to different space and time, we are reducing um, input signal power. To get each of these input features, we are taking contrast along some input dimensions, and we can have enough signal power for these features by taking signal integration along the other input dimensions. So therefore, if we want to take two input features uh, simultaneously, we have to take contrast in more than one dimensions, and therefore, uh, thereby we uh, reduce input power further. Consequently, fewer V1 cells are tuned to more than two features conjunctively. Now, here is a perceptual consequence of this neural substrate. In this checkerboard of red and green, Patches, if we let each patch flicker in color between red and green synchronously, so when this green becomes red, that red becomes green, and so on. We still have a checkerboard, except that colors alternate in time. Now, if the flickering is fast enough to say, let's say, 30 hertz, then we humans cannot see the flicker when the red and green patches have the same luminance. Yeah, this is because there are few V1 cells tuned simultaneously to color and high tempo frequency, or tuned simultaneously to color and fast motion. So if you want to see the color, the visual system has to integrate in time. So therefore, one can see the color, but not the tempo figure.